What is this? Today we're taking a trip unto, up into the mountains to Hacienda Illuminada, which is the place where they grow the coffee for this coffee shop. 787 Coffee. There are a number of these in New York City and two of them here in Puerto Rico. And we're going to see where the Puerto Rico's finest coffee comes from. But first, of course, we need a cup of coffee for the road. So vamos! Whiskey infused coffee and rum. This does not mean any And rum infused coffee. Oh my gosh. Just stirring together the espresso. So, how is it, Lisa? Gabriella makes a really good cup of iced vanilla latte. Uh, Delicioso, que rico. Excellent day. Mm. Well, let's go to La Hacienda. Vamos. We're up in the mountains in Utuado, about half an hour still from. Hacienda Illuminata. I wanted to share some of the amazing journey because we're off the highways and out of the villages. And this is the part where it... Definitely the winding roads. <laughs> <laughs> As Bob would say, it gets a bit dicey here. So we find, finally made it here and we were not the last people here. So we're waiting for one more group, but here's a, just a super nice uh, reception area. Um, they're, they're pretty new here, so uh, they're still doing a lot of construction. But uh, we're waiting for the last group, and uh, I can't wait to uh, go on the tour. So how did you get into this? You want to do it here? Yeah, and record it here. It's, it's rolling right now. Okay, excellent. So, uh, so yeah, so it all started uh, back in 2012. Uh, my background, it's aviation. Brandon's, it's marketing. Uh, we love coffee. Yeah, we love coffee. So, uh, are you like childhood friends? No, 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 no. Oh. no. We actually met on an airplane. Oh. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, 14 years ago. Yeah. So I love agriculture. We both love coffee. He's got a marketing background, so we're like, huh. We started visiting every single coffee origin in the world. Africa, That's what Asia, I thought he said. <laughs> yeah, everywhere. Central, South America, learning about coffee. Uh, particularly uh, coffee growing, uh, sustainable practices. So that's what we did. And then uh, around 2013, we found this place. It was an abandoned coffee farm, but I fell in love with it. Starting there, it was jungle. Mm -hmm. It was an abandoned coffee farm. The forest took over, and it was jungle starting where that little fence is. Uh -huh. Uh, but regardless, I mean, I fell in love. I told Brandon, uh, we did our research, negotiated, negotiated, and uh, almost a year later, they finally said, okay. So, uh, yeah, we got it in October 2014. Uh, we named it Hacienda Illuminada. That's my mother's name. She passed away when I was 16, so we named it after her. She was a nation lover. Uh, yeah, so we got the farm, we hired people from the neighborhood. Uh, Maricao, it's very well known to be an agricultural coffee uh, town. One of the best coffee back in the day came from Maricao. Uh, but at the same time, because agriculture is it's disappearing here, yeah. it's so rural here, uh, the town is becoming a ghost town. Mm. And the people are in, in need of, of jobs. Mm -hmm. So uh, we hire people from here, amazing humans, and we started planting, 
planting, planting, and then people were like, okay, when are we gonna try your coffee? When are we gonna try your coffee? Well, you're not gonna try our coffee because we're gonna send it to specialty coffee market. That's green bean. And uh, they kept on asking, and Brandon said, you know what, let's launch a coffee brand. And that's when we came up with 77 Coffee, and uh, we launched the uh, brand back in 2016. Uh, so ah. it's named after the area. Area code. Area code. Great, great, yeah, 77 yeah, yeah. Coffee. So yeah. what, what about the, what about the, uh, the coffee shops? You know, in, uh, in in New York, yeah, and I mean, that, I mean that's, that's, that's a big step from yes, growing yes. growing some stuff, yes. you know, and, and, and shipping it out to Absolutely. running so, running coffee shops. Yeah, that started in 2017. The first coffee shop was here in Maricao, okay. uh, inside a uh, a uh, guest house. It was amazing. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful place. We put a lot of love into that that coffee shop. Uh, and then by summer, we opened up uh, four coffee shops in New York City, small shops, store within a store, mm -hmm. inside the okay. Yeah. inside all the stores and uh, it was going amazing then september 2017 hit and that was the hurricane we lost everything here yeah. uh, we had no coffee so our business model our, our culture is we serve the coffee we grow mm -hmm. since we couldn't do that we closed permanently all oh. five coffee shops ah. uh, we decided to keep the farm even though it was a complete loss because of the people here because of the people here that need jobs you know we were very fortunate my background is in aviation i'm a pilot brand and marketing so we were covered but our people they were not covered so we were like we have to we have to keep the farm and keep jobs here uh -huh. we have to we have to yeah. provide their families and uh and that's what we did and then we were very fortunate in 2018 a year later we had enough coffee from the uh from the from the from 17 the coffee we were able to save and then the new crop of 18 uh, we had enough coffee and we opened up our first coffee shop post hurricane maria in new york city a oh, full nice. real coffee shop and uh, that was 18 now 2021 we're gonna close with 15 shops wow. in new york city and uh two here in puerto rico the third one is gonna be here at the farm when we first got the property it was a, a traditional uh farm that means that whomever Got, had this farm years ago, decided to shop the, the forest and plant directly under the sun. <laughs> and uh, supposedly that was good, uh, production was better, but no. I know they've been following us, huh? So, uh, but that's, that, that was not the case. We found out the hard way. We planted and planted coffee and uh, most of it just died. Especially uh, during uh, during coffee, you know, during picking season, uh, all the trees were full of coffee, but the sun was hitting them so bad that they would just them out. die. And of course, the, the the crop as well. When is harvest? When is harvest? Here, here at this location, we're on the peak of harvest now. Uh, here, because of the elevation and the temperature, we start by the end of September. We start the end of September, down lower elevation like Lares, places like that, uh, they're pretty much done. We already pick everything. Here is from late September uh, all the way to February. So it all depends on the rains. If we get rains, they you know take the coffee down so that doesn't help much it's good if it, it stops raining now and you know it, it's easy easier that way uh are there like general characteristics of like higher you know altitude coffee versus lower altitude? yes the higher you go the more acidity the coffee is going to develop okay. the dense the, the denser the coffee bean is going to be the harder Okay. So the, the, the dense, the more dense, the denser the coffee bean is, uh, the roasting is going to be better, it's going to be more even. Okay. Uh, and then with the acidity, it's the same thing. Acidity is a good, good attribute of coffee because it, it breaks, the way I, I, I see it or explain it is it, it, it breaks down the, the, 
the boring part of the coffee. If the coffee is like flat, it's like eh, boring. But if you take a sip of coffee and it's like bright, it gives yeah. you that kick, but then it goes down slowly, then that's, that's, that's a good quality. And here we're at 3,000 feet elevation. So it's, it's good elevation and our coffee tends to be, you know, on the, on the acid side, so that's good. We started planting shade and uh, we saw the difference. And we're gonna go through some lots that are completely exposed to the, to the sun. And we're gonna go through some lots that are on the shade and you're gonna see the difference. Okay, okay and the way, the way I explain it is, the same way we are, right? We have an immune system. And uh, if the immune system goes down, we're susceptible to many uh, diseases or we're, we open up ourselves to a cold and that cold is gonna go into, you know, bronchitis and then who knows what else, right? But if our immune system is strong, then it battles mm -hmm. the disease better, right? So mm -hmm. same with the coffee tree. If the coffee tree is exposed to the sun, full, fully sun, then Let's beat that, it's the, the, the tree is battling. It's battling. Mm -hmm. It's battling. Any disease that hits the tree is going gonna, is gonna to kill that tree most probably. Uh -huh. On the other hand, is the co if the coffee hits under the shade, you see like over there, you see these trees here, right? <coughs> but then you go further, you know, under the shade and look at the difference. Yes, sir. It's very obvious. And this one here, the same thing. Look at this one here. It's, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's then bad. again, if it's under the, on the shade, right? Mm -hmm. The tree is strong, its immune system is strong. Pests and diseases are very hard to, to fight with the tree. So the tree actually fights those and the tree wins. The coffee develops better. When the coffee is on the shade, it takes longer for the sherry for uh, for the bee for the, well yeah for the sherry itself to ripen so the longer it takes the sugars develop better so you're gonna have a sweeter coffee in the avoidance of wheat killers like roundup uh is bad for the environment is but is bad for us so uh yes you're gonna see a lot of weeds that's good for the birch, it's good for erosion control. Okay, so we firmly believe in shade, in reforesting. We're planting trees everywhere. There are lots that are exposed uh, to the east, they're the most uh, affected by the sun because they get sun all the way in the morning, the noon sun, and when, when the sun hits the mountain, then it's it's, it's been hitting the plant pretty much the whole day. So it happens that these were the lots that had the, the least amount of uh, shade trees. Mm. Uh, so that was a problem. That was a problem. And y usually the eastern lots, those are the ones that are mostly affected by hurricanes. Mm. The way the mm -hmm. circulation happens, well, of course, it depends how the hurricane is coming, right? But Maria, the way Maria came, this was full of coffee, full of coffee. Mm -hmm. And we lost it pretty much all here. Uh, it, was, it was pretty bad. Uh, so now we decided just to let the weeds take over, plant Carbonero. You see them here, you see them over there. We lost a few huge trees here, so that wasn't good. So anyways, we're planting tree, tr uh, shade trees after we have the shade here, then we'll plant coffee. Now we're doing it the right way. We moved in here, we started planting coffee, and then the shade. <laughs> but big trees take forever to grow. So we learned the hard way, but at least we learned it, right? Mm -hmm. So now we're planting shade, and then the coffee trees. So Maria took all of the coffee plants off of this, uh, off of this hill back in 2017. And they're just letting it go to uh, go to weed for the time being. They're going to plant some shade trees and then they'll replant the, uh, the coffee plants. We're not growing now Robusta, but we have some lots of Robusta from generations mm -hmm. ago uh, that we have in there. 
And uh, we're just, since it's robusta, ro the difference between robusta and arabica, robusta is a very robust tree. It's not susceptible to diseases, it's very strong. But the coffee itself is not uh, as, as sweet. arabica. People, they, they talk bad about robusta. But if you process robusta the same way you process arabica, you're going to get a very fine product. Okay, not as sweet, but you're gonna get a very good product mm. from Robusta. And uh, so we have a few lots, and at some point we're gonna plan and we're gonna see, study it and see how it goes. And what we're thinking is we're gonna offer a very caffeinated coffee product because Robusta has more caffeine than Arabica. So we're thinking about making like a blend Arabica and Robusta, but specialty Robusta. That are pristine forest. We do not touch that. Those are the lungs of our farm, of our forest. Uh, inside uh, those 30 acres, it's 30, 35 acres, uh, we have two springs. Two springs that, that, that are born there. So we're, the water we use are from the springs here at the farm. Yeah, it's amazing. You start walking uphill, there's the stream, and all of a sudden, poof, it disappears. Is el nacimiento, the birth place of the spring. Very amazing. We're gonna we're gonna see it over there. Excellent. So uh, those are eastern facing uh, lots. So they suffer a lot with the hurricane, with the sun. So again, you can see that we're planting carboneros. These are carboneros. There's carboneros over there, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna see. We're gonna look down in a few minutes, and you're gonna see the canopy. You don't see the you don't see the coffee anymore. All you see is the top of the canopy, mm. and that's what we want. That's what we're looking for. And we process it separately, because that one is not going to be specialty coffee. Mm. And the problem with that is that it eats. The, the bore goes in, it lays the eggs in there, it goes to another one, it does the same thing. And then when the babies are born, the larvae, they eat the, uh, the sherry or the bean actually, the bean inside. So there's no coffee there. Sometimes they eat both beans inside because you know that there is two coffee beans mm -hmm. in each coffee sherry. We planted 45,000 coffee trees. Mm. We throw away all the investment. All the eggs were in, this, in one basket. Mm. Beautiful, I mean, the trees were amazing. I got pictures. Because we're up here, we had not picked a single coffee bean or a single cherry. Oh. Because it, the hurricane hit when September 20, September 20, mm, or something? Mm. September what? Yeah. So uh, we had not picked a single bean. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. Although most of the farms in Puerto Rico, they had already picked the, the coffee. Mm. And it's crazy because we lost everything. The insurance we got was worth a month of payroll. But uh, they had been, you know, before they knew the, the tricks, and uh, even though they had picked all the coffee, they said, Oh, we lost the coffee. Look, the trees are, I have no coffee. They already had picked the coffee. Friends, the fungus I was telling you about, right? This, that one is exposed to the sun. Fungus takes over. This one is shade. Look at the difference. Look at the coffee here. Look at how, look how the coffee ripens here. This is like. This is the difference. This is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, and how much um, how much coffee do you get out of one of these plants? Like a healthy well, one like it, this one? It, it all depends, but you can get easily the, the the formula we use for a healthy healthy tree. It's an almud. An almud is the uh, the measure we use for the coffee picker, and it's 28 pounds. 28 so pounds. So a, uh -huh. a a fully developed healthy tree 28 pounds you can get wow. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. sometimes more I mean it all depends uh -huh. some trees they're eight feet tall uh -huh. you know five feet wide and uh, depending on the variety Arabica but depending on the variety some varieties are very poor when it comes to production like the Bourbon is very poor but it gives you amazing coffee it's one of the best cups Muy bien. And so this is what we're looking for the uh it, it it matures it ripens evenly you can come here you go like this and then you have 
Yeah. Here, the, the red one you see, you have a few pounds here. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Se las ponen aquí. And then you start picking coffee. So you come here. They fix the, the holes with this, right? <laughs> Smart. Uh, so you come here and then you start picking coffee. It's selective, so you pick the beans. Oops, that one went to the floor. It's like you twist and pull. You twist and pull. Twist and pull. Try not to take the, uh, the green ones or the not so red ones. And then you have to fill this ba basket. <laughs> and that's it, and then lunch. <laughs> <laughs> For each basket, you get one sandwich. <laughs> Half sandwich. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, supervise, hold on to the basket. Well, everyone else picks, actually twists and pulls, twists and pulls. Mad to you guys. <laughs> Well, that was a fascinating day, learning all about how coffee is grown at Hacienda Illuminata. I had no idea that shade was so important to growing coffee and all of their adventures and um, obstacles and the fact that they still are able to make such incredible coffee is just fascinating to me. Of course, all we got to see so far was how they grow it. I'm really looking forward to next time when we get to see how they roasted it and actually drink it. But until then, May your suitcase always be messy. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell to be notified about the next videos. Hasta luego.